hear me? Kurt, can you hear me? I do. Great. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> Wasn't working there for a minute. And, and you can see my screen okay? Yep. Great. Perfect. Um, so welcome, everyone. Um, today we're going to be talking about the Business Analyzer, which is a component of the new GP release, um, which is Dynamics GP 2010 Release 2. And so that's what that R2 means. Um, at the end of my, my title there. So this is the most current, the latest and greatest. Um, what we're going to be doing today is talking about the Business Analyzer um, to understand a little bit more about what it does. Um, we'll take a look at some system requirements and some installation processes. And then I've got a couple of demo scenarios to run through with you today. Um, I, I don't think this is going to take more than probably um, a half an hour altogether, so hopefully we'll buy you back an extra half hour for today. Um, so let's start with what is the Business Analyzer. Um, it provides access to SQL reporting services, KPIs, charts, and reports. So all of those metrics and, and things like that that you're able to see in GP now you can actually um, provide access to those um, either still within GP, and we'll take a look at that, um, but there's also a desktop application. So almost like um, a business intelligence dashboard, if you will, um, that gives you access to those reporting services reports. There are over 150 reports provided out of the box, and because it's reporting services based, um, it's real easy to make changes to those reports um, or add new reports. There are also um, multi-company capabilities. So for those of you who have multiple companies, um, keep in mind that there are, I think there's 12 out-of-the-box multi-company reports. And of course, as I said, because this is reporting services, um, you do have the ability to add more reports, or we can help you with that as well. Um, and it's also, um, because it's reporting services again, um, we're, we're able to access information from multiple sources. So you're able to do things, for those of you using dynamic CRM, you're able to do things like see your, um, your pipeline and your actually booked invoices and orders and or orders on the same dashboard. So that's, that's pretty powerful and, and um, we'll take a look at how that's set up as well. So here are our system requirements, um, pretty, pretty standard. Um, if you're using GP, you probably have most of this already. I put GP here in the bottom in bold. If you're not using GP, then it, you, you don't have business uh, analyzer, so that, that's probably, um, probably shouldn't even be there. Um, I have two things in italics here. I have SharePoint Windows. Um, and that is more um, if you're deploying your report um, using SharePoint. So if you've deployed your, your reporting services reports in SharePoint, then this is the version you need to have for, um, for a business uh, analyzer to be able to access those. And there's also a component of business analyzer that allows you to add contacts um, and communicate using Office Communicator or Microsoft Link directly from that particular report um, or, or chart. So I put those in italics because they're not required. They are optional, and it, it's just deployment how you choose to deploy. So there are two components of the business analyzer. There's just the standard uh, business analyzer that installs with the GP. And as I mentioned, there's a desktop um, disconnected from GP, I guess, version as well. And that requires a, a light user. Um, and also, you have to have access to SQL as well. So there's a, a couple of uh, additional components for the non-GP user. Before you install, you need to make sure that you have your reporting services installed and configured. Um, and that includes um, security. You also need to deploy your um, 
reporting services reports for GP. So all of those SQL reporting services reports that we're starting to see roll into GP, you need to make sure that that deployment has happened. And if it hasn't, um, if you're kind of a power user, you can try and do it yourself. Um, and there's how you navigate tools, setup, system, reporting tool setup. Um, and this is an area where you might want to ask your associate consultant for help um, because they know how to do this. They've done it many, many times. Um, but you can see here we've got our reporting services reports. Um, we're using the report server mode, which is native, which means we're going to use the reporting services report manager as opposed to SharePoint. Um, something else to, to look at here um, that's important for you to be aware of is CRM connection information. So here's where we can connect in our reporting services reports to that CRM information, and that's how we're going to tell it, um, you know, we want to see pipeline, we want to see, you know, service calls, that sort of thing from CRM in our uh, business analyzer data. Um, so that business analyzer for the GP user installs with GP. So there's really nothing else that you need to do. The Business Analyzer desktop requires a separate installation. And um, it's pretty simple from your media. So whether you've got a, you know, you've downloaded the media or you actually have a CD, um, when you launch the media, you'll see, um, there's, my, there's my cursor, you'll see this Business Analyzer option. And when you click on that, it gives you um, three options to install, view the docu documentation, or create an install package. So um, you can automate the installation as well. So when you choose install, this is really all you have to do is, um, is point it to the reporting server, um, reporting services um, URL so that it knows where to pull those reports from. And if it's configured in SharePoint, then you just point it to SharePoint. Pretty straightforward. Okay. So we're going to have um, demos kind of from two perspectives today. Uh, the first one is as a non So for this, we're going to be looking at the Business Analyzer desktop. And so let me get over there. And here it is. Um, so what I've done here is I've got several reports that I've loaded in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, kind of take you through the capabilities and then we'll look at some of the reports. So you can, you know, learn how to move around and then we'll take a look at the details. So um, here I'm in, I'm in what's called split screen mode where I've got um, a dashboard element here at the top and, you know, I can click through or I can actually even start a slideshow and have it just, you know, feed through this slideshow. I think mine refreshes every 30 seconds or something. Or I can just use the arrows to scroll, um, scroll around through um, all of the information that I, as a user, have loaded into my, um, my business analyzer. Um, I can view it in this split screen mode. I can toggle between dashboard and split screen. So here's a dashboard mode. Um, and so here's where I can see everything all at once. And you, know, you can make this bigger. You can take it full screen if you want to. Um, so um, you have the option of, of viewing a little bit more about what you're, um, what's, what's on the screen or the dashboard that you're currently working with. Um, I can also, once I'm in a particular report, um, it's really, really easy for me to, uh, I don't know, get some more information about that report. I can see when it was last rendered. Um, and I can see um, the exact name of that report. So if I want to go in, if I don't like it and I want to remove it, from my, from my dashboard, I can see the report and, and go in and take care of that. And you notice that's just kind of like a little poster pop-up. Um, it pops up and then it goes away. Um, I can also view this report. So um, let's, let's actually get a better report here, with a little better data. Let's do, let's do this one. Um, I can actually view this report. And what this does is it pulls it out and takes it into um, reporting services. And from here, I can do all the things that I can normally do in reporting services, like you know, if the report has drill down cap capabilities, I can drill in, um, you know, look at a, a more detailed report. So here's a sub-report that's been um, created based on that, um, 
that summary report. And from here, if I've got this capability enabled and if I am a GP user, that's important, I can click on, in this case, an invoice. And it's going to go ahead and pull that invoice up um, and allow me to drill back into GP. And so here's the transaction inquiry window for that invoice 2271. So 2271, and it's for this 100, this green phone, 100 XLG, and you can see the details there. Um, so I've drilled back into my detailed transaction. So once you, um, once you view your, um, your report, um, it's just all of the capabilities that you're normally used to seeing for reporting services reports. Now, if you have security rights, you can edit these reports as well. I'm not going to do that right now. Um, but if you know how to edit a report, you know how to do that. Um, I can also copy this report image. So if I want to um, I don't know, copy this report image out and maybe um, I want to go into Outlook, and we'll let this open up here and actually um, address a new email. Maybe I want to email that information to someone. Or, or maybe I want to um, drop it in my financial reports. Maybe I want to put it in a financial statement or in a PowerPoint um, or something like that. I can very easily um, just copy that report image out and paste it right into whatever I want to paste it into. Um, in this case, we're, we're pasting it into um, into a, a, um, an email. So we'll do that. And um, I can also, I'm going to move to a different report here. I've got one report that is more, um, more focused on particular date range. And so you can see today's top work, uh, work center load. So this is a manufacturing-based report. And you can see it says there's no data available. Um, and that's because in my scenario here, um, all of my demo data is in April 12, 2017. And this particular report is looking at my system date, um, my actually network Windows system date. And so that is going to be today, which is 7-27-2011. So if I change this to be, let's try this. Again, keep that open. If I change that out, there we go. So I'm able to see that. So you can, um, when you've got your reports up on the screen, you can actually move around in different dates if you want to. If you want to see yesterday or last week or last month, all you need to do is just change that date. I mentioned this um, link information, and so the, the unified communications, and that's what this is telling me here. Um, is that I've got um, a capability here to add contacts to this dashboard element. So today's top work center load. Maybe I want to um, you know, talk to the production manager. And so for this particular uh, report, I'm going to add the production manager as a contact. And then when I'm looking at this, if I want to contact him in instant message, um, via instant message, I can go ahead and just you know click on that contact information and he, he'll show up as being a contact for this. So it makes it a little bit easier to collaborate and share information um, you know amongst all of your employees. And um, you know if, if I have the capability within a particular report, I can go ahead and, and um, select the company for that as well if I have multiple companies. So um, as far as determining what reports show up, um, you've got some options. Um, we looked at this window mode by using the icons, but I can pick a particular company or a particular series within um, my company selection. So if I only wanted to see sales reports, for example, I'd be able to see those. Where we pick our reports and decide as a user what we want to see in our um, in our business analyzer is under options. So I'm going to go ahead and pick options. 
And what first comes up um, is a, a list of user preferences here. Um, so you can see um, how often, when we turn on the slideshow here, how often do you want it to refresh? How often should all of the reports be refreshed? And then when we're in dashboard mode, which is this mode, what size do we want each of our uh, dashboard elements to be displayed in? So I, you know, I could probably benefit from making mine a little bigger. Um, and so, but you do have control over that. As well, you can decide what reports you want to see. So here's all of the reports that I have. I'm going to take this full screen because I think it's easier for you to see all the report names and everything as I start uh, pulling, pulling open more information here. But as I hit the plus here, you can see in multi-company, I'm just going to open all of these up here. I said that there are 12 out-of-the-box multi-company reports, and here they are. Um, and so you're able to see each of those elements, the gross profit year-to-date, for example, across all of your companies, or select companies, depending on the companies that you've chosen um, in, that, in that list. From a, just a, an operational reporting perspective, if I come down here, this is my company code here, TWO, and you can see this is divided out into each of the functional areas in GP. And if I start expanding this, where I'm going to want to pull these um, is from the charts and KPIs. And you can see there's just a ton of information that's available out of the box. All I need to do is just pick one and insert it then into my um, into my reports. And so it'll go ahead and, and you can check multiple if you want to and insert it in there and that will then be added into um, into your analyzer. Let's go back to split screen. Um, so just to kind of give you an idea of some of the information that's about that's out there right now, um, today's top work center load, um, I mentioned that's manufacturing focus. Here's customer year-to-date sales by state. Uh, keep in mind that if you're going to want to render your, um, your charts or KPIs using maps, you'll need to be on SQL um, 2008 Release 2 um, to be able to do that. Um, so that's, that's that R2. So Reporting Services R2, SQL 2008 R2, GP R2. We all need the R2 to, to do the map. Um, the rest of these, um, you don't need to have that. But I've got my top 10 customer balances, top 10 items by sales quantity for the past 30 days, gross profit for the past 12 months, top five vendors, inventory turnover, change in expenses. So you can see um, pretty much um, anything that you won't need to view um, as, as someone who needs to be kind of stay on top of information, or if you've got folks in, inside your organization that are not GP users but want to have access to information, this Business Analyzer desktop application is a really, really good way to provide them with information that they can self-serve and, um, and access when they want to. And remember, we're not just limited to the information. It's, um, it's, it's all of those reports that we saw um, in the options area as well as any you know custom uh, reports that you create or have created for you. So that is, um, that's from a, a non-GP user perspective. So the other way that we want to look at this information is as a GP user, which I think probably most of you on the call today are. So what we're going to do here is I'm actually going to close out of this. I'm just going to close Business Analyzer here and open up GP. And um, where I am in GP is I'm in my navigation list, and, and I've actually got a list here for vendors whose balance is over $20,000. So I owe all of these vendors more than $20,000, and I saved it as a favorite in my navigation list. Um, and within GP, this is actually where Business Analyzer comes into play, so um, within each of the navigation lists. What I've got here um, is obviously payables-focused, vendor-focused um, metrics. And so, for example, here's an, an aging report by vendor for my advanced office systems vendor, because that's who I'm on here. 
I can see number of late shipments, um, purchases, a um, whole lot of information about my advanced office um, systems vendor. So that's great. Um, I can move to the next one. Here's a merit charge. We'll click down on that, and we can, um, when the report refreshes, you'll be able to see the aging then for um, a merit charge. So here you can see the same information. It's just for a different event. Same um, dashboards across the bottom here, the same metrics. That's great. What if I want to see this information for multiple vendors? This is where it becomes really powerful. You may have heard the, the, this concept of contextual business intelligence. Well, that's really what this is, because I can come up here and check. I'm going to ch check the all box here. And you can see it's given me little, um, little refresh icons here. So this is how I can refresh those reports. Or I can just do a Control F5 and it refreshes everything. That's usually what I do. But you can see now, I'm looking at the payables aging by vendor for all four of these vendors. And if I you know, pull one out, it's going to tell me I need to refresh it. And it's going to take the, the Americharge out. And now, again, we've got contextual business intelligence. So the, the, the information that's rendered in my metric changes based on what I've selected in my list. Keep in mind that the same kind of things apply as what we saw um, on the desktop version. So I can get more information. I can view the report. I can edit it. I can copy it. I can filter it. I can change the date. So all of the information, um, everything that I can do externally, I can do internally as well. Um, and I'm just going to come up here to the top here. Um, and this is where I kind of you set up your, your navigation list and save them. Um, but the way that I made this appear is I came in to show hide, and I made sure that it was checked here. Business analyzer was checked. And so, and then I can resize it and, and, and things like that once I have the information um, in, in that uh, business analyzer area. There's also some additional settings um, that you can apply here. Um, you can display it in dashboard mode. I don't know if my eyes will allow um, me to see that information um, just because it's going to be so small. Um, but here's where you can reload all of the reports. And then there's user settings as well. And so, this is, and when you're in dashboard mode, what, how do you want it to look, and then how often, if you're doing, if you've clicked this little start arrow here, um, if you're doing a slideshow, how often do you want it to change slides? So uh, keep in mind that that Business Analyzer is not just, um, NGP is not just for vendors. This is only my example. Um, so this is available throughout GP. Uh, <clears throat> um, you know, you'll find it relating to customers, employees, inventory items. Um, all through GP. So um, that concludes uh, our demonstration. I'm going to go ahead and turn things back over to Kirk. To, uh, okay. We appreciate you uh, attending here today. If you do have any questions at this time, uh, if you could notify us uh, by the raising of your hand on, the, uh, on your, your icon there, and we can ask your question. We can open up the phone lines and let anybody ask a question. If there are no questions at this time and you need to, just, to speak with someone about this in greater detail, you can contact your account managers and they could make sure you are uh, in touch with the correct person who can help you with any specific questions. And again, being that this is part of Dynamics 2010 R2, Obviously, to have this functionality, you would need to be updated to that version. So if there are questions about how do you get from your current version to this version, again, that's something we can help you with. So we're uh, in, in the way of uh, future planning, uh, we are doing these seminars uh, every um, fourth Wednesday of the month. The next one is going to be August 24th. And we will be looking at the module called GP Extender. 
which is a tool that allows you to make certain custom fields within Great Plains without the need of being a programmer. Then during the month of September, we will not be holding a webinar such as this because we're going to be hosting our annual client conference, which is going to be in Columbus, Ohio. And there is a website there, uh, associates1.com forward slash aspire, where you can get some details as to uh, the content that will be provided during that uh, all-day conference. And there's also a place to register for that on that website. And then finally, in October, uh, we will doing, we'll be doing another one of these webinars for the module called Collections Management. So I'm going to open up the phone lines here just for a second, and if there are anybody that does have um, that does have any questions right now, we'll give you the opportunity to ask that question. Well, it doesn't appear to be there are any questions at this point in time. So we will at this point go ahead and close this session.